I am your host with the most Locum 23, you're joining me for the Royal Masquerade, Chapter 12, Love Struck. You look at all the giant heart that's been wheeled into the room and wonder what Theodosia has in mind for your final match against Renza. Theodosia, I think we need some explanation. I'm happy to explain the rules, just as soon as the King Regent relieves himself of his clothes. A group of young, noble women force their way through the crowd. Out of the way, I'm not missing this for the world. We want to see your abdomen muscles. Strap him to the board and put it on display. Woo! Is this truly necessary? Only if you want our little game to have a winner. If not, I suppose it's not too late to rekindle my own bid for queen. Caden approaches the giant heart wheel. Where you join him? Julia, look here at the wood. Have you noticed yet? Love struck wheel. Yeah, we're gonna throw things at him. Are those knife marks? This is getting dangerous. If there is no one steering La Lady Theodosia from this path, I will take the King Regent's place as his crown shield. I appreciate your instincts, Caden. There's no need. I can handle myself. But... But nothing. I have pledged to do everything in my power to help Julia, and I cannot stand by while an opportunity to do, to do so passes. It is my job to keep you safe. Stripping to your undergarments and being strapped to a giant wheel is beyond your duties. No, I must do this myself. Let's talk a fewer clothes. The crowd has waited long enough. Hunter, I think the EOC wants you to strip, but... This is too far. If Lady Julia wishes to stop the proceedings, you'll hear no complaints from me. I win by default. Are there no lines you won't cross for the crown? Julia, I agree with you, but which is worse, playing Thedeus' game or allowing an assassin to take the throne? You're right. If this is the only way, then very well. <clears throat> um, question. If we put you on this wheel and I throw something at your throat and it nails you and you die, that's technically putting an assassin on the throne. Just saying. Since no one thought this out. Hunter removes his clothes with an easy flourish. My, my, sister. You have done well for yourself, haven't you? Oh, someone catch me! I'm about to faint! I would, but I need my hands to wipe the perspiration from my brow. Woo! Theodosia, I demand that you allow all the attractive people here to remove our clothes as well. Ow, ow! Well, give us a damn good reason as to why Hunter is the only one who gets to show off what he's working with. Never fear, there is a practical reason for Hunter stripping. How else are we going to see precisely where the throwing knife lands? Throwing knives? Quickly pull Hunter to the side. Under... I can find a different path to the throne. One with more clothes and fewer knives. If only that were possible. I can try. Don't worry, the Eudosia might be eccentric, but she's not going to let herself go down in history as an accessory to the King Regent's murder. The Eudosia turns to address the crowd. Will tonight be the King Regent's last? Only the Eudosia and Arrakis can deliver this a sort of top-shelf drama. As always, think your cards will be appreciated and expected. Now see here, Theodosia, this may be a game, but if the King Regent truly meets harm, there will be a price for the one who delivers it. Ah, oh, must you ruin everything with the Hawk of Justice and other boring topics? The knives haven't even been sharpened. That's worse. Enough. Tell us the rules so I can win and be done with it. Ah, oh, the rules are simple. Renza and Julia will be given three throwing knives, and we'll take turns throwing them at the wheel. You may start by striking the wheel far away from Hunter, but each throw afterward ought to be closer than the last. When all the knives are thrown, the person who threw the knife closest to Hunter's body wins. Theodosius Page delivers you three throwing knives. Hunter looks down at the knives in your hands. Are you ready for this? 
as much as I could be. So you have a plan? My strategy will be to high risk, high reward. I see. Nervous? I have nothing but the most powerful faith in you. Our finalists have their weapons. I say let the games begin. Theodosia snaps her fingers and her servants set to work strapping Hunter's wrists and ankles to the giant wheel. It's happening. It's really happening. Oh, he looks even better without his clothes on than I remember. Woo! That's all this woman ever says is woo now. Good luck, Hunter. Servants finish the shackles and hook a thick rope on the back of the wheel. A few tugs later, the entire structure is hoisted six feet into the air with Hunter attached. Whoa. Who throws for... Or you can finish asking, a knife whizzes past your face and strikes the wheel to the right of Hunter's head. The crowd gasps and applauds. Does that answer your question? Wonderful. Simply wonderful. You're thrown next, Lady Julia. I've never thrown a knife before, but if Rinza can do it, I can too. Oh, no, that's not how this works. You take a deep breath and do your best to calm your nerves. Here goes nothing. I should aim at the wheels outer edge. Just inside Rinza's knife at Hunter. You pull your arm back and release the knife. Your knife hits the wheel precisely where you aimed it. Bullseye. However... Huh? It hits handled first, bouncing to the floor without sticking into the board. Oh, this is going to be easier than I thought. Renza lines up her next throw and releases her second knife. It spins gracefully across the room, landing in the wood just inside her first. That was close. Be a dear and do try to provide at least a small challenge, Julia. This is not looking good. A moment's delay, if I may, Lady Theodosia. Oh, but things were just getting interesting. I assure you, my intention is only to make them more so. Percival gestures for you to join him out of earshot from the others. I thought you might appreciate some assistance. Thank you. How did Renza get so good at this anyway? I taught her. You? Long ago, at a regrettable social function involving an ill-advised portion of red wine, it's been her party trick ever since. What should I do? Note how weakly Renza's knives stick in the wood. She focuses on accuracy in her form rather than brute strength. Try holding your knife by the tip of the blade rather than the handle and flick your wrist upon it release, like so. You will have less time to aim, but the blade should lodge in the wood. That's enough whispering from the both of you. It's time to finish our little game before Hunter loses nerve. You nod to Percival and retake your position in the front of the wheel. You can do this, Julia. Just inside Renza's knife. You take the knife by its tip, pull your arm back and release the knife with a flick of your wrist. The knife sails through the air to the large wheel where it sticks just a few inches closer to Hunter than Renza's last knife. I did it. Well thrown, Lady Julia. Well thrown indeed. This little contest has gone on long enough. It's time to end this and claim Theodosia as my house's ally. That is not going to happen. Now, now, there's no need to fight over a little old me, is there? Oh, what am I saying? Of course there is. Renza lifts her final knife and looks at you. Keeping her eyes locked on yours, she winks as she launches her knife across the room towards Hunter. Hunter! Renza's knife sticks into the wood, with one edge cut shallowly through the side of Hunter's arm. Hunter, you're bleeding. Sorry, brother. Did that sting? It's just a little more than a scratch. Caden slowly pulls you to the side. I've never seen someone throw a knife so expertly other than Lord Percival himself, and to do so without even looking... Rinza's throw was pure skill. It makes you wonder what else we don't know about the Regent's twin. Too much, I fear. Lady Julia, we impatiently wait your final throw. 
Percival. What should I do? To win, I must throw closer than Renza, but to throw any closer would mean injuring Hunter. I fear I have no helpful advice for such a situation. I do not envy the decision you must make. Just then, Hunter shouts out to you. I will take the hit. Any injury I may suffer is nothing compared to the damning fate of this kingdom. I will not win the crown in this way, not by hurting those I care for. Strong words, but what choice do you have? Think, Julia, think. There must be a way to win. I need to visualize the situation. If I can get any closer to Renza's knife, then... I should throw out Renza's knife. At the straps, binding Hunter. A temper tendrum. Mmm. At Renza's knife. In my head, this is going completely different than it's probably going to go on Pixel Berries. It means knocking, because like they said, her knife is very weakly held in the wood. If we knock her knife out... Hmm... Let's do the Straps Binding Hunter. You can't really aim your throw and release miraculously slicing through the bindings without piercing Hunter. Oh... Hunter drops like a stone from six feet up, landing painfully on his rear end. Ah, oh, what was the point of that? We win, though? Hunter stands up, rubbing the sore spot. Excellent. How does that work? Honestly, I have no idea. Back to the drawing board. I know I can come up with a better idea. Okay, so we get to practice. At the ropes holding the wheel, at Renza's knife, a temper tantrum. I don't know, let's try Renza's knife. Since we get to visualize train. You pull the knife back, release, hoping to hit the impossible small target, despite your lack of experience. Your knife misses just by a few inches, embedding deeply in Hunter's neck. Julia, I... Hunter, I didn't mean... You watch as life drains from Hunter's eyes a moment later, he's gone. Hey, at least we hit the target. Shake off the awful prediction and return to your senses, considering your poor accuracy. Such a throw would be too risky. Must be a better solution. At the ropes holding the wheel... Look down at your feet to where the ropes are supporting the wheel anchored to the floor. The rope is just there. I know I could hit it. I only hope Hunter can forgive me. Aim your knife at the ropes, anchoring the giant wheel, and release. Huh! Not even clo- Wait, what? The knife slices cleanly through the ropes, releasing the giant wheel to the floor with Hunter still attached. Ah! The massive wheel falls to its edge, begins to roll uncontrollably towards the crowd. The nobles rush towards the door, hoping to escape before it crushes them. Women and children first! With sexy men and their dogs before them. <coughs> Julia, watch out! Where do you jump? Out of the wheel's way, onto the wheel. Eh, out of the wheel's way. Save yourself! Just as the wheel is about to roll into you, you leap from its path, accidentally barreling into Theodosia. Hey! You tumble backward into the lap of Theodosia's flowing pink dress just as the wheel trips and crashes to the ground. When dust settles, you're glad to see Hunter on top. That was marvelous, just marvelous. Also, you can get off of me now, thank you. But why, Theodosia? I'm confessing our love for you. You stand up and smooth your dress as Theodosia removes the restraints from Hunter. The danger now passed, Renza and the other nobles return to the room. Lady Julia has not only lost her mind, she has also lost the game in the support of House Nebracus. The outcome here is clear, I win. You may want to look again. Everyone circles the love-struck wheel to inspect the final placement of the contestant's knives. Goodness gracious, Lady Renza's knives were dislodged when the wheel fell. While my li final knife remains lodged in the wood. What? Lady Julia is right. I hereby declare Lady Julia Rosario winner and champion of my marvelous game and desirable partnership. I did it. You cheated. No, we thought. Oh, Renza. The stars favor me, is it? That they disfavor you. 
I swear I will. Rains are enough a pharaoh should accept when they have been bested with dignity and grace. But said a pharaoh should never be bested to begin with. How dare you fail us like this. But father, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't fair. This is my manner, my game, my rules. I decide what's fair. And frankly, that was a climax too spectacular to ignore. A spectacular climax, you say? Oh? You're right. It's too easy. Fine, let Julie have this victory. Now unbar the door. Oh, but then you'd miss the best part. Because you've all been wonderful sports this evening, I decided to do something very special for all of you. Not to sound ungrateful, but I think we're all specialed out for the evening. Nonsense. Tonight, each of you will be presented with your own personal chamber of ultimate desire. You will each spend the night in a unique room designed to give you what you want more than anything else in the world. Hunter leans toward your ear and whispers, Or what Theodosia thinks we want more than anything. That was a marvelous performance, Lady Julian. Second only the one I would have given had I been playing myself. Let us meet in the morning to discuss the details of our alliance. Theodosia leaves, your friends surround you and cheer your name. Thank you, my friends. I could not have done this without your support. Annalisa, your advice during the dance was indispensable. I try. Percival, I would have not have won without your training. Ah, oh, you honor me, but it is you who threw the knife. And Hunter, I would have not done it with, well, without your, well, willingness to strip your clothes and have knives thrown at you. I would do it again, though hopefully it will not come to that. I owe you my life, and Cordonia owes you her future. I will have always believed that you can do anything. After tonight, I'm glad that my trust and your knives were not misplaced. I'm just glad it's over, and by the sound of things, it seems we're in for the very interesting evening. Not long after, Theodosius Page escorts you through the Narakis Manor to the room for the night. Is this it? Indeed, your chamber's ultimate desire is beyond this door. Lady Theodosia and her grace and generosity spared no expense in its construction. Construction? Not sure what you expect. You open the door to your private room. And find a full reconstruction of the palace throne room. This is detail. Why, of course it is, your highness. Nothing but the best would do the for the Queen of Cordonia. The Queen? Precisely. Isn't that what you desire beyond anything in the world? One of your servants leads you to the throne, while the other kneels and offers you a jeweled crown seated upon a pillow. I wonder what the other nobles' rooms are like. What a beautiful and gracious queen, always thinking about her subjects before herself. Allow me to rub your royal footsies, your majesty. Royal footsies. Wow. Annalisa steps through the doors in your chamber. You there! You dare enter your queen's chambers uninvited? The young woman moves to bar your sister's entry. The servants. Announce and present my royal guest. Of course, my lovely liege, now presenting Annalisa Rosario. Your mona, the modest and uncouth Annalisa Rosario, should it please you, your majesty? It pleases your queen. Escort the rabble to my person so that I may better judge her. One of the servants reaches for Annalisa's arm. If you touch me without asking, I may be forced to modestly and uncouthly break your arm off. Ah, uh, your majesty... I'd listen to her if I were you. Perhaps you have other parts of your kingdom to attend. Ah, uh, of course, your majesty. Your servants scurry out from the room as you stand from your throne and place your crown at your feet. Having fun? I suppose there are worse things than being treated like royalty after the day I had. How about you? I'm dying to know what Theod Theodosia had arranged. Hmm, how should I put this? My room is filled with a large feather bed, a colorful assortment of, shall we say, creative implements of personal nature? I don't, I don't get it. Oh? I suspect that the spies may have happened across my collection of romance novels and taken things just a bit too seriously. Just 
what must be inside of her mind. Tonight's games were unexpected, to say the least. And Elisa steps past you and brushes her hand against the throne behind you. She looks down at the crown wistfully. Annalisa, there's still time for us to switch places. As you say the words, Annalisa steps past you and slowly lowers herself onto the throne. Just for a moment later, she rises back to her feet and shakes her head. To be honest with you, there's a lot of freedom in where I currently find myself. I am free to support and advise you, then carry on, chasing after whatever I fancy as it takes me. Fancies like Percival Balmond. He is the perfect example. On one hand, I feel something special for him. And then, more than even special, perhaps. He is an eligible man from a powerful house, and yet, I don't need to worry about any of that. I care for him deeply, I enjoy his company. Perhaps someday our attraction will blossom into something more, but for now, I don't have to worry about the future. We can just focus on enjoying one another. That feeling is new to me. I don't think I'm ready to give it up just yet. Not even to the most powerful woman in the kingdom. Being in charge can be wondrous, but it's not all riches and power and glory. Sometimes, often, leaders must make hard choices. Impossible choices. Annalisa mins down and lifts the crown into her hand. She raises it to light and stares into the shimmering gemstones. The same things that can, that can make a crown beautiful make it heavy. After a moment of quiet, she smiles warmly and places the crown back in your hands. So, it is a good thing you're strong. Now I shall leave you to your governance, your majesty. Off to consort with Percival. I would love to, but it seems that his room is quite crowded, while my room is... Frankly, I'm not sure his heart would survive the embarrassment. I'm sure we could find a solution. So long as you don't mind some sneaking. Just then, Star Fox rushes into the room with a large ring of keys hanging from his mouth. You hear voices yelling from down the hall. Ow! Get back here with my king key ring, you filthy beast! Where are the rest of the sausages? Star Fox, you mischievous thing. What have you done? You're lucky you're cute. Now, let me get... Uh, let me see what you've got there. Take the skeleton key. What is this? If that's what I think it is, I might have an idea. Follow me. And Lisa takes you by the hand and leads you into the hall. See all these doors? They lead to the others. Chambers of ultimate desire. I believe the key you have is a skeleton key to the Varrakis Manor. If you wanted to, you could open any of the doors in there. Really? That could be most interesting and for so many different reasons. Annalisa weighs you over to the nearby door. This one is Caden's Chamber of Ultimate Desire. I can't hear voices, but it seems there is a cool wind blowing in from underneath the door. What could be causing that? Oh, and over there, that one is Cyrus's chamber. You join your sister and you place your ear against the door. You hear the faint clank of metal and what sounds like a key turning in a lock. After everything he put Theodosia through, I can't even imagine what she's planned for him in there. You continually quiet down the hall until the sound of raised but muffled voices draws you to another door. That's Renza's room. Who knows what she's plotting after you beat her at Lovestruck. You look down at the key in your hand and realize there is a way to find out. Meanwhile, your sister has moved on to another doorway. That's strange. This one seems empty. You said that uh, you were having trouble finding somewhere to share private time with Percival, right? Perhaps it's a bedroom. Don't tip me, but more importantly, do not forget your own desires. What door beside you is Hunter's? You quietly approach Hunter's door and place your ear against the wood. You don't hear anything. It seems Hunter hasn't arrived yet. Oh, there's no reason for you to idle while you wait. So many rooms, so many possibilities. Where should I start? With the key, all things are possible. It is only a question of how many chambers you wish to unlock. Okay. A bedroom for Annalisa. Caden. Cyrus. Renza. All four. Each one's ten. Oh boy, you get to save five diamonds, guys. Oh boy. 
Before I do anything else, it's time for you and Percival to be given your new chamber of ultimate desire. One you can share. You can Annalisa by the hand, you sneak to Percival's chamber where you can hear muffled voices arguing in great commotion. What's going on in there? I don't know. Pompous voice. Ah, but you forget the second dictum of Western Amendment added 1125. You insult me, sir. I simply refuse to consider such a ruling as cross-territorial procedement. Maybe we should just knock. Wrap your knuckles lightly against the door. Percival is quick to open it. Lady Julie, Lady Annalisa, how pleasing to see you both. To what do I owe the honor? Perhaps you should care to join our debate? The side supporting a duke's right to declare proactive esquine detain for his holdings could use two sharp lines. Actually, I was hoping to save you from whatever it is going on in there. I don't follow. Why should I want to be saved from a quorum of bickering legal academics? Um, what my sister means is she wants to have her way with you. And which way is that? Oh god, are you denser than me, sir? Honestly, Percival, sometimes I worry about you. I'm sorry, if a woman looked at me and go, I want to have my way with you, I'd be like, Oh, okay then. Annalisa stands on her toes and whispers into Percival's ear. He turns as red as an apple. Oh, I, I, I see. I indeed. Percival joins you in the hall and you lead him and your sister to an unmarked door. I say this is all very cloak and dagger. I know. It's just like one of my novels. Oh, you you mean those novels? Yes, I, I suppose it is. Hopefully this one is empty. You slide your key into the lock and open the door. Hmm, it's a bit sparse, isn't it? Oh, that only means there are fewer things to distract me from you. Hmm, look who's suddenly a romantic. It is possible that I've been studying your books in between legal treaties, of course. I wonder if there's anything else you learned. I am very an observant reader, you know. What? Well, how else would you read? I believe this is where I bid you both fond farewell. Oh, I won't forget tonight, Julia. Your sister winks. Nor what you did for me. Close the door, leaving them in peace as you move back into the hall alone. Now that Annalisa settled, I should see if I can learn anything about Rinza's plans before it's too late. You make your way down the hall to the door of Rinza's chamber. You slide the key in the lock, quietly open the door. And see two silhouettes flickering against the wall from behind a stack of wine barrels. You enter the room and crouch behind the barrels, careful not to be seen. I think that's Lord Damon's voice. How dare you lose to a commoner? You were born better than her. If she bests you, it's because you bested yourself. She cheated! Oh, and will that knowledge soothe you while the mighty House Ferrero bows at the feet of an illegitimate orphan? We will never bow to that- ah! The door- oh, the open door behind you creaks quietly. Oh no. Who's there? With no other option, you rush forward into the room as Renza leans her head around to look at the door where you'd been standing. Suddenly, you hear the noise of a drawn sword. Yah! The tip of Damon's rapier sails blindly between the wine bottles directly towards you. Duck, turn, gasp, duck. You quickly duck just as the tip of the blade thrusts into the air above. Father, be careful of the wine. No one is there. That was close. You've come to care too much for fruitless things. Perhaps I was wrong to choose you over your brother. You're soft. I am anything but soft. Look around you. Even the oldest noble house in Gordonia thinks your ultimate desire is to surround it by wine. Do you truly think winning Theodosia's little game was my only plan? There's no room left for your schemes. House Nebrakis will stand with House Rosario. Even House Vescovi joined House Pharaoh. Yes, those four houses may be out of play for now, but there are five at court. But how could... I would tell you more, but I prefer to protect you, should there be unintended fallout. What is she talking about? Time grows short. 
Then in addition to my other plan, I shall sow discord along the way, beginning with Theodosia. Have faith in me, father. Only because I must. I had better get out of here before Lady Lord Damien passes by and sees me. Moving silently, you quickly escape the room and return to the hall. I wonder how Cyrus fits into this. It's odd that his chamber is so quiet now. You make your way down to the hall to the Lord of Dorf's or Cyrus's chamber. You slide your key in the lock, open the door, and... You see Theodosia, completely naked inside of a giant birdcage. Her back is facing the door, so she does not see you when you come inside. Okay. Ah, Lord Cyrus, at last you have arrived. I'm sure you're wondering why your chamber is devoid of anything but me. Theodosia runs her hands essentially down the sides of her body as she delicately wiggles her bottom at you. I, um, what? You see, I know that despite everything you said, and down, deep down, in that cold, rotting heart of yours, you burn for me, and burn hard. You once told me that you would die if I'm unequal to see the delightful sparkle of my lustrous eyes, so tonight I shall point them elsewhere, and we will put that to the test. Theodosia essentially licks one of the bars of the birdcage, sours, and then tries to spit it out the taste. Anyway, the point is that I am the only thing that you want, so here I am, except you cannot have me. You will spend the entire night inside of this room with me, watching me, wanting me, lusting for me, but not having me. Ha! So there. I should probably get out of here. Yeah, this is a bit weird. Theodosia awkwardly begins to dance against the bars. Now I know what you're thinking. You should get out of here. How can you stand behind locked in a room all night with the object of your desire just out of reach? But that's why I've instructed my page to lock you in. Oh no. You turn to find the closed or the door closing behind you from the outside. Um I'm gonna stop the door before it closes. Rapidly spin on your heels and slide a shoe between the door and the door frame, drawing your attention of Theodosius Page. What? Uh, something wrong, Marcellus. Eyes go wide as you shake your head no at the page, crossing your arms into an X. Here, no, Lady Theodosius, struggling with the lock. Well, give me my eyes averted from your magnificent form. Hurry up and be done with it so I may begin. Lord Cyrus is much deserved torture. Uh, yes, your ladyship. The page ushers you to leave quickly. You mouth the words. Thank you. And waste no time following his advice by returning to the hall. After all that, I could use some time with a friend. Make your way down the hall to the door of Caden's chambers. You slide your key into the lock, open the door, and... Are surprised to find yourself outside in a near distant... In the near distance, you spot Caden reclining against a log with three of his guards. What are you all doing here? Welcome to my chamber of ultimate desire. I'll soon into some grass! I was just in the room of a certain married woman. Her name is unimportant, and let me tell you, her chamber was incredible. To put our beloved commander in a field is a bit of an insult, I'd say. Little did Lady Theo know that... The chief would rather hang out with us than her any day. I am sure that Theodosia knew how much you'd prefer this. You're giving her a lot of credit. We're going to be allies soon. I must think the best of her. No, Caden likes peacefulness, and I could see this. A room of nature, of just peacefulness. I could see it. No matter what she was meant, she's giving me a gift tonight. I'll take a cool breeze over some stuffy manor any day. They told him. I'm just so glad we get to spend the evening together. Who I'm actually the first that Fiskasti stole a flask of ale from! He's kidding, Chief. Just kidding. I acquired that ale from a merchant in Dumb. On the grounds. I knew that Theodosia is a bit of master of the unexpected, but an ale merchant in her own house? My, how strange. Isn't it, though? 
That ale, the same as, as this field, doesn't matter where, why, why we got it. What matters is we, we have it. So let's drink! I can't argue with that. Aiden grabs a flask. For the nobles who don't know what they're missing. He takes a swig and passes on to the person beside him. Two big beefy ladies who can crush you between their toes. Their vows written to be broken. Two. Sunshine tries to grab the flask, but Frisk deftly tosses it over and you instead. The good friends. To good friends and yeah, good friends and and the cheer guards cheer make merry. Ah, it was wonderful seeing you all again. But don't make us wait so long next time. A sentiment to all of us share. You stay a bit longer beneath the stars and then say your goodbyes and move back into the hall. I'm sure Hunter has arrived at their chamber by now. I should check. Hunter, their chamber. Okay. You venture back into the hall and make your way to Hunter's door and press your ear against the wood. I hear high-pitched giggling. Why are you surprised Hunter is a player? What could that mean? If I unlock the door, I'm sure I'll find out and get some much-needed alone time with Hunter. If it is truly Hunter's Chamber of Ultimate Desire, perhaps I belong inside. Who knows what we could get up to in such a place. I'm calling it right now. The chamber has another woman in it and she's giggling. Calling it. Come on, who's with me? You slide the key into the lock, open the door, and... Find him surrounded by giggling women. Hey, look at that! Call it! But your clothes look so heavy and comfortable on your body. I can help you with that. My lady, contain yourself. Come on, your regency. Lady Theodosius told us we were your ultimate fantasy. I assure you there has been some miscommunication. Not that you ladies aren't perfectly charming. Take off your socks with my teeth. I... Okay. Ladies, Lord Cyrus is stripping in the room next door. <gasps> oh, you have us miss our chance to see Lord Hunter the way he was born? Lord Cyrus has the body of a god, but Lord Hunter is a god. Ladies, once again, I assure you, I will not be removing my clothing for you. Better the chiseled dog lover than nothing. Let's go see those Vescovi bonds. The woman rushed out of the room, leaving you and Hunter alone. He lets out a sigh of relief. Oh, my hero, thank you for rescuing me. I am not sure how much longer I would have been able to hold them off. How did they find their way into your room in the first place? I am afraid that that was Theodosia's idea. She thought I would enjoy being beset by overly eager women. Hmm, wherever did she get that idea? Yes, well, there may have been a time when I would have been enjoyed that sort of thing, but... Slips his arm around you, pulling you close. Since we met, I only had eyes for one woman. Now I actually get a moment alone with you to relax. You look over the room and find a steaming bath and countless exotic oils. This is giving me memories of her time at the spa during the Tournament of Flowers. Good memories, ones, I hope. Good, yes, but I believe the uh, even best thing can be improved. Well then, let us put this warm bath to use and see what we can do. Only if you undress me. Nothing would please me more. Hunter's hands travel skillfully down your body, undoing laces and clasps until your dress hangs loosely from your shoulders. He leans in and slowly kisses a path down your collarbone, letting the dress slip further and further down your body as your, his mouth journeys lower. You certainly are taking your... Sweet time. I want to save it this moment. Finally, you let the dress drop to your feet, and Hunter surveys your body hungrily. I am truly the luckiest person in the world tonight. You wade into the tub, throwing a coy glance over your shoulder. Hunter watches you transfixed. Will you not join me? I was going to, but you look so beautiful, I must capture this capture. 
Hunter takes a roll of parchment and a quill from a nearby desk, laying them on a tray. He sits down at the edge of the tub. <laughs> if it's all right by you, I would like to draw you. You never told me you were an Arnas. It is one of my many skills I was trained in as a young noble, though I only find use of it on rare occasions when inspiration strikes, such as here, in this precise moment with you. Your cheeks flush. <clears throat> I have never sat for a portrait before. How shall I pose? However you see fit. I wish to capture the real Julia Rosaria, just as she is. Recline sensuously. Soap myself up. Stand up. Recline. You lie back, stretching your arms along the edges of the tub so the water barely covers your breasts. On her gaze as fiercely, his eyes burning in you. I thought you meant to draw me. So far, I think you are just staring. It's difficult to do anything else, I'll admit, Julie. I... <sighs> Forgive me, I, I am overcome. Perhaps I should try to pose that will not distract you so. As if such a thing is possible. You sink back into the water, turning away from Hunter and glancing over your shoulder. Hunter takes a deep breath and begins sketching. You feel yourself relaxing in the warmth of the water, and the sound of Hunter's quill on parchment creates a gentle rhythm. Finally, the scratches of the quill creases. There. Are you ready? You turn as Hunter holds up the completed sketch. Hmm. She has a... she has a butt. In thick butt, okay. It's incredible. You have true talent. I'm glad you like it. I fear not even the most talented artist could capture a fracture of your beauty. Still, it would have been criminal to not to at least tempt it. I wonder what else your hands can do. My, my, Lady Julia. If you're so eager, I can give you a taste. Well, then why don't you get into the bath with me? Yes, I have had enough of simply looking at you. I would rather feel you. He strips, giving you time to admire his nearly naked body before stepping into the water, wrapping you in his arms. You're overcome by the sensation of your bare skin pressed to his. He leans in, nuzzling your neck, and whispers in your ear. And how shall I delight you tonight? Why don't you... Massage me. Perfect. My hands belong on your body. He moves behind you, hands delicately pressing into the tense muscles of your neck and shoulders. Under his touch, you begin to relax. His hands move down your back, then he reaches in the front. Fingers trail up your thighs and over your breasts. Hmm, I'm not familiar with this method of massage. I assure you, it relieves tension like nothing else. He leans down to kiss the back of your neck. You let out a soft sigh of delight as his hands drop lower once again. Hunter. You melt back into the steaming water as Hunter's fingers slide below your waist. You close your eyes and you begin. You become weightless, your body nothing more than pleasure made form. Hunter surveys your body. Lady Julia, your body is truly something to behold. As Hunter slows, your mind returns as you drop back into the bench beneath the water as you turn to face him. If only our destiny could be spinned our lives like this, together, and in private, as often as possible. Hunter closes the distance between you and kisses you tenderly. When we first met, it was I who wouldn't be with you, at least not openly. And now the burden is mine to bear. Will our fortunes never align? Whether they do or not, nothing will keep me from you as long as you'll have me. Not even the stars themselves. Having your arm around Hunter's neck, you draw him towards you and kiss him, forgetting for the moment the responsibilities of a woman who would be queen. Someday. Until then, we must make the best of every opportunity given to us. I'd say tonight was a powerful start. Soon, the water grows cool. You dry yourselves and dress. That was something special. It always is when I'm with you. And it gives you one last lingering kiss, and then you depart back into the hall. 
You move back into your own chamber and soon fall into a blissful sleep. The next morning, you awake suddenly to Theodosia standing over your bed. Huh? Theodosia, I'm, I'm not even dressed yet. If I'd waited for you to wake, I wouldn't have gotten to see your reaction to the chamber I prepared for you. By the look of things, you're quite surprised. Not exactly what I was expecting. Um, the surprise was from waking up with you leaning over me so close to my face. As for the chamber, honestly... <clears throat> There's more to me than in my desire to be queen. Well, I wasn't able to fill one of my nice chambers with the dusty tomes and ugly librarians, now was I? That's not what I meant. Oh, so you wanted clean tomes and sexy librarians? Because if you want me to call my page and have him... Please, don't trouble yourself further. You have done more than enough, and I have been everything... And have been everything I could hope for in an ally. San Renza saunters into the room. Ah, yes, allies, what fun. After all, I do love wedding. What are you talking about? Yes, Renza, what are you talking about? It's obvious to me, but clearly Julia doesn't know, so you may as well say it aloud so that she understands what I already knew. A wedding to seal your alliance, of course. Theodosia was so gracious in offering her alliance to the winner of their game, but... But but no house as great as hers would ever let themselves be insulted by not sealing the partnership with a traditional marriage. Mm, a traditional marriage? Who asked you, anyway? I was only making idle conversation. After all... Can I help it if I'm curious about what's happening with House Navrakis? Of course not. No one can help it, and they shouldn't have to. But... Renza is right. I always planning to speak with you about an engagement, and I definitely did not consider it for the first time just now. This must be the discord that I overheard Renza promise her father. The mighty House Navrakis cannot ally without marriage. What would people think, or worse, what would they say aloud? We tried this once already. This is different. You're said to be Queen of Cordonia. I would never expect you to marry. The, the duty of marriage will fall to your sister. Your sister to my brother. Annalisa. No, she can't. I'd say my work here's done. Lorenzo smirks and leaves you to your conversation with Theodosia. Now, about her impending alliance. Theodosia. Annalisa marrying your brother is off the table. How dare you speak to me what is and isn't on tables without my within my own manner. Now do you want this alliance or not? Annalisa is in love with another. It smells like juicy gossip. Do tell. Would it change your mind if I did? Oh heavens no. The matter is sealed or settled. Your sister Annalisa will marry my brother Hector. Once they are publicly pledged, so too will I pledge my house to House Rosario. There must be some other way. There isn't. I also have no idea why you would say anything, but yes. But you have until tomorrow's Twilight's Ball to decide. But Theodosia. Mark my words, Julia. Even though I don't adore you almost as much as I adore myself, I will not bend. You must choose. Either Annalisa marries Hector or I will never, ever vote for you to be queen. Theodosia has asked you to make an impossible decision. What will you decide? All right. Well, with that being said, thank you all for watching. Please do make sure to like the video. Make sure to also subscribe. Head to the description below. Links to social media, Discord, and if you like support me and my content. You know, this message that you see in before you, there's a reason why it's up here. You know, it's a great way of supporting the channel because without people supporting it and sharing it, liking it, you know, things like that, our channel does not grow. I know. I know. It's shocking. But, uh, yeah. Also, make sure to hit the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload content. And also, uh, you know, make sure you're subscribed and uh, consider hitting the join button. Without further ado, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.